This is a 1958 Pioneer 400 chainsaw and today we're going to talk about it. This video is going to be a great resource for history and information on this chainsaw, so stay tuned. So first off, I just want to say thank you for clicking on this video. Welcome to Midwest Garage. This is an automotive channel, but it differs from other automotive channels because I understand that life is a lot more than just working on project vehicles and learning how to fix your daily driver. Um, maintenance on everyday things like lawn equipment, snow blowers, your four-wheeler, chainsaws are just as important as anything else. So I like to cover a little bit of everything here. Basically anything the average guy has in their garage, I cover on Midwest Garage. Now, onto this chainsaw. So I picked this up for really cheap. It was sitting in a guy's garage for how many years? And it was just taking up space and he wanted to get rid of it. I, before I bought it from him, I looked on the internet, tried to find information on this, and surprisingly, I could find almost nothing on this specific chainsaw. I could find a couple of pictures here and there, but that was really about it. And so the purpose of this video is to share what knowledge I do have of this chainsaw with the hopes that people watch this video and then add their own information or if they know a lot about this saw, they'll add it to the comments down below. And this video will be a great resource and pretty much the only resource on the internet for this specific saw. So let's get started. So like I said, I picked this up for really cheap. It doesn't run. I just thought it was so cool. Um, I had to buy it and I figured I would deal with the rest afterwards. So this is a Pioneer chainsaw. Pioneer is a Canadian manufacturer or was a Canadian manufacturer. They started making saws in around 1955 and then basically stopped once they were bought out by Elux in 1979. And so Elux or Electrolux bought out a ton of chainsaw manufacturers in the late 70s, early 80s. In 79, they had bought out Husqvarna, Partner, and John Surrett, I believe. And then they started purchasing more of the lower end saws, such as Pioneer, Poulin, etc. Now, you will find a decent amount of information on a Partner 400, which is a saw that was made in the 80s by Pioneer and Partner. You see, once Elux had purchased Partner and Pioneer, in North America, those two companies had actually combined while they stayed separate over in Europe. And so the small partner 400 that you can find information on is very different than this beast right here. This is an actual Pioneer 400 that was built and manufactured before they were bought out by any other company. So the company that actually made Pioneer chainsaws was Outboard Marine Corporation out of Petersboro, Ontario. And they specialized in all sorts of small engine uh, manufacturing, such as lawn boy lawn mowers, Pioneer chainsaws, stuff like that. And so this 400 model of chainsaw was introduced in 1958, and then they discontinued it in 1959. I'm not sure why they discontinued it so fast. Maybe it was a crap saw. Who knows? Now, the other information that I did find on this saw is that it is a 5.45 cube saw, which means 5.45 cubic inches or 89 cc's, which is a really big engine. Obviously, you can tell in the video this is a big heavy-duty saw. It's very heavy, um, but 89 cc's is comparable to a steel MS660. I guarantee it does not have the output or the power of an MS660. But as far as engine displacement, it is very similar. Now, another cool thing about this saw is obviously it's old enough where it doesn't have a chain break. It didn't come from the manufacturer with one. It wasn't required like it is now. It also doesn't have a throttle safety switch. And as far as I can see, it does not have a decompression valve, which means starting this pig was probably pretty tough. I would love to see the guy that was able to drop start this thing. So looking at it from this side, you can see that it has a foot peg there and that's so that you can really get your boot down in there and 
hold that thing to the ground while you rip on this thing because as I said, it does not have a decompression valve. So it was probably a real pig to start. And obviously I haven't cleaned this thing up yet. I wanted to show it to you guys as I found it before I actually clean it up. And so here's your two cycle gas and oil mixture since this is obviously a two stroke engine. There's for your bar and chain oil. I'm not sure what this is yet or this, but this is an oil pump. And overall it looks to be in pretty good shape. Some of the fins here are busted, but for being 60 years old at the time of this video, that's pretty good. I also just think it's cool how it doesn't have a full handle in the back. It's kind of a neat design. When it comes to identifying this chainsaw, it's pretty easy. Um, it's one of the only saws that I've ever seen with this style of back handle. Also, they have Pioneer all over this thing, as well as a big 400 on the back. And their Pioneer logo is an evergreen tree. Now, after Pioneer was bought by Elux, they did continue using the Pioneer name and logo for a while after. So it is hard to identify whether it's a true Pioneer or if it was a Pioneer after it was bought out by Elux. So as I said, I will be cleaning this up. There are going to be future videos of me uh, tearing this apart, trying to restore it and actually get it running. So for now, I think I'm just gonna give it a quick rub down, clean it up a little bit because I wanted to show you guys how I found it in almost barn fine condition because I just kind of think that stuff's kind of cool. So as I said before, that's about all the information I could really find on this thing. So if you guys have more information or knowledge about this saw, please share it in the comments below so that we can all learn from each other. If you enjoyed this video, please share it with somebody who's also a chainsaw enthusiast. I'm sure they'd really enjoy seeing this old hog. And if you're not already, please consider subscribing to Midwest Garage so that you don't miss some of my other projects as well as the restoration of this thing. And hopefully we'll be able to hear it run soon. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you in the next video.